Hello 3D printing friends! Today on the BV3D channel, we'll learn how to design your 3D models to use heat set inserts. I'm Brian, and you are watching BV3D. Hi, welcome back. Okay, so when I made a video recently about how to install heat set inserts, I said I'd make a video for you about designing for heat set inserts if there seemed to be enough interest. Well, I heard you, so here we are. There are two main things that I take into consideration when designing the holes that will accommodate heat set inserts. First, the dimensions of the actual insert itself, in particular its outside diameter and its length. Second, the length of the screw that's going to be used with the insert. Here is an example of an M4 heat set insert that I'll be using in the video. This is from a kit I bought on Amazon with like 300 various and sundry inserts. This specific one is an M4 by 10 by 6 millimeter insert. That means it's threaded for an M4 screw and the insert is 10 millimeters long and its outside diameter is 6 millimeters. And the screw I'm going to use with this is an M4 by 16 screw, which means the threaded part of the screw is 16 millimeters long. I like to model the hole at slightly less than the outside diameter of the heat set insert. That should provide plenty of plastic for the insert to bite into without there being so much that it gets in the way or blocks the insert's threaded part. I also model the hole to be slightly deeper than the length of the screw or the length of the insert, whichever is longer. That allows the screw to screw into the insert all the way with room to spare. So let's get into Tinkercad and actually do some design work for this M4 heat set insert and the M4 by 16 screw. I've got a new blank design in Tinkercad and I'll drag a solid 20 millimeter box onto the work plane. And then I'll drag in a cylinder, but instead of a solid, I'm using a whole part. When you group a whole part with a solid part in Tinkercad, the whole part gets cut out of the solid. So let's put this design philosophy to work. Since the outside diameter of the heat set insert is 6 millimeters, I want the hole in the part to be just a tiny bit smaller than that. I've found that subtracting 0.4 millimeters from the diameter of the insert seems to be the sweet spot, so I'll set the diameter of the cylinder to 5.6 millimeters. And the M4 screw is 16 millimeters long. Now remember, I want the hole to be just a little bit deeper than either the length of the insert or the full length of the screw, whichever is longer. The screw is longer than the insert, so that's the critical length. I'll set the height of the cylinder to 17 millimeters so the screw won't bottom out. Now select both the box and the cylinder. With both of them selected, click the Align tool. Click the box to set it as the alignment reference, and then click the circles to align the tops of the two parts, and then click the circles to align the X and Y centers. Finally, click the Group tool to group the solid box and the whole cylinder, which will cut the cylinder shape out of the box. If I set the box to Transparent by pressing the T key while it's selected, you can see that the hole doesn't go all the way through it. While we're here in Tinkercad, let's design a part that will be screwed onto this one so you can see how that works. Drag a 20 millimeter box onto the work plane. Then adjust its dimensions so that it's 40 millimeters by 20 millimeters and 5 millimeters tall. There are two ways to design the screw holes in this part. You can design just a hole for the screw so the screw head sits on top of the part, or you can design a recessed hole for the screw head so that when the part is assembled, the screw head isn't protruding. I'll show you how to do both, and we'll do both on this rectangle we just made. The just a hole design is easier, so we'll do that one first. Before we can design though, we need to take some measurements of the screw. The head on the M4 button head screw that I chose for this project is about 7.5 millimeters in diameter, and it's about 2.5 millimeters tall. And because it's an M4 screw, we can assume that the threaded part is roughly 4 millimeters in diameter. So any hole that we design for the screw will need to accommodate the threaded part. And by accommodate, I mean be roomy enough for the screw to fit into comfortably without needing any post-processing. 
so a hole diameter of about 5 millimeters should work just fine. That would leave a half millimeter gap all the way around the shaft of the screw. To make the screw hole, drag a hole type cylinder onto the work plane. Then set its diameter to 5 millimeters. To make sure the cylinder is going to cut a hole exactly where we need it, we're going to have to align the parts in their final assembly positions. Tinkercad lets us temporarily place the work plane on the surface of pretty much any object. And Tinkercad also has a drop to work plane feature that moves an object so that its bottom is on the work plane. We can use these features to move the rectangle and the cylindrical hole up to exactly the height of the box that we already made. Here's how. First, drag the work plane tool onto the top of the box. That gives us a temporary work plane at that level. Next, click the rectangle to select it. Then, press the D key on your keyboard to use the drop to work plane feature. The rectangle is now resting on the temporary work plane. Do the same for the cylinder. Click to select it, then press the D key. Now we can set the work plane back to where it belongs. Drag the work plane tool to an open area of the design and that will reset it. To make things easier to align, let's turn off the perspective view and switch to the orthographic view by clicking this button. Use the 3D rotation control at the top left corner to set the view to a top-down view. And you can do this by clicking right on the word top on the control. We need to be able to see through the rectangle to get the screw hole aligned, so click the rectangle and press the T key on your keyboard. That makes the part transparent. Select both the box and the rectangle and use the alignment tool to align them on one corner. Next, select the cylinder and use the duplicate tool to duplicate it. Remember, we're making two different kinds of screw holes and this cylinder is the one that makes a cutout for the threaded part of the screw, so we need two. When you duplicate the cylinder, the duplicate is in the exact same position as the original. So drag the cylinder over to the rectangle and you'll see that it leaves its twin behind. You can roughly position the cylinder over the hole in the cube. Then, with only the cylinder selected, you can quickly zoom in for more precise positioning by pressing the F key on the keyboard. That's F for focus. In other words, you're telling Tinkercad that you want to focus on that particular object. Now, since we're going to need to do some fine positioning of that cylinder, change the snap grid from the default 1 mm down to 0.1 mm. Then you can either drag the cylinder around or use the arrow keys to nudge it into position. Try to get the cylinder centered over the hole in the box. Even at a resolution of 0.1 mm, getting it absolutely perfect is probably not going to happen, but get it as close as you can. If your inner perfectionist can't stand it though, you can turn the snap grid off completely and nudge with the arrow keys to get it just right. So a quick note here. Due to the geometry of these parts, it is possible, and actually pretty easy, to center this cylinder over the hole in the box. Since the box below has the hole for the insert exactly centered within it, using the alignment tool to center this cylinder with the box would also perfectly align this cylinder with that hole. But in a real world design, it's unlikely that such a perfect alignment of the stars, or components, would actually occur. So that's why I'm showing you how to zero in on the positioning in a manual way. Okay, so with the cylinder as centered over the hole as you care to make it, select both the rectangle and the cylinder, but not the box below. Then, use the Group tool to group the cylinder with the rectangle, which cuts a screw hole in the rectangle. Now, there's a screw hole in the rectangle. It's sized to allow the screw to pass through and into the box below. The screw head will rest on the top surface of the rectangle. Now, I told you I'd show you how to make a screw hole where the screw head is recessed into the part, so let's do that next. We'll do it in the same rectangle, just on the other side of it. With the rectangle selected, use its rotation controls to spin it 180 degrees. Now, the part of it that doesn't have a hole is over the box. Grab that cylinder that's still floating off to the side and line it up over the hole in the box just like you did before. Don't forget the snap grid is still set to whatever you set it to last. For me, it's off. 
so I can freely position the cylinder to get it centered over the hole. Earlier, I mentioned the screw head and it was 7.5 millimeters in diameter and 2.5 millimeters tall. So to accommodate the screw head, I need to cut another cylindrical hole. Since I want the screw head to fit very comfortably and not snug, I want to add a one millimeter gap all the way around it. That means I need a cylindrical hole that's 9.5 millimeters in diameter. And to ensure the screw head sits below the surface of the rectangle, the cylindrical hole needs to be at least a millimeter deeper than the 2.5 millimeter height of the screw head. So that means a 3.5 millimeter deep hole for the screw head. Now we know that the hole for the screw head needs to be 9.5 millimeters in diameter and 3.5 millimeters deep. There's a conveniently available cylinder right here, so let's select it and then duplicate it. Drag it upwards by using the cone-shaped drag handle at the top of it. Then you can set the diameter to 9.5 millimeters and set the height to 3.5 millimeters. Now it's the right size, but it's not in the right place. This time, we can use the alignment tool to make some positioning adjustments. First, we can center the larger diameter cylinder on the smaller diameter one. Select both cylinders, then click the alignment tool. To set the smaller diameter cylinder as the alignment reference, hover the pointer over it for a second and then click. The alignment controls should now be relative to this cylinder. Click the center circles on the X and Y axes to center the larger diameter cylinder on the smaller one. Then click away from the cylinders to deselect them. Select the rectangle and the larger diameter cylinder and click the alignment tool again. Hover over the rectangle for a second and then click to set it as the alignment reference. Then click to align the cylinder with the top surface of the rectangle. Select the two cylinders and the rectangle, but not the cube, and group them together to cut the cylinder shapes out of the rectangle. The end result should be a rectangle with two screw holes cut out of it and a cube with a hole cut out of it for a heat set insert. Set the snap grid back to one millimeter. Then drag the rectangle away from the cube just a bit. With the rectangle still selected, press the D key on the keyboard to drop it to the work plane. If you like, you can also press the T key to toggle its transparency. Now that the design work is done, export the parts as STL files and then slice them and print them. Then we can test the inserting of the insert and the screwing in of the screws. Okay, the parts are printed, so let's install the insert and then test the screw holes. These particular inserts that I'm using have a smooth section at the end where the diameter is a little bit less than the full outside diameter of the knurled part. So that makes them easier to stage in the printed parts because that section fits inside the hole while the knurled part does not. Then use a soldering iron or a heat set insert machine like I showed in that other video to get the insert melted down into the printed part. Heat the iron to about the same temperature as you printed the part, then press the insert down into the part. I press them in until they're just a tiny bit below the surface of the part. Now, don't touch the insert right after you've installed it. Give it a couple of minutes to cool down so you don't burn yourself. Then, test that the screw can go all the way in. It should, because we designed the hole to be slightly deeper than the screw's length. Well, now let's test the screw holes to make sure they're correctly designed. Put the screw in the non-recessed screw hole and it should fit easily without binding in the hole. Next, check that the other screw hole, the one with the recessed area for the screw head, is also working as expected. The screw should fit into the hole easily without binding, and the screw head should fit in the recess without protruding above the part. Finally, test the alignment of the holes by screwing the rectangle to the cube. You should be able to line up the edges of the rectangle and the edges of the cube, and it should all fit together perfectly. I did this design around an M4 heat set insert, but the design philosophy I showed works for other insert sizes as well. Regardless of the heat set insert's size, subtracting 0.4 millimeters from its outside diameter seems to give the right value for the diameter of the hole that you should design into your model. 
And adding one millimeter to the length of the screw or the length of the insert, whichever is longer, gives the right depth for that hole. Adding a millimeter to the diameter of the threaded part of the screw gives the right diameter for a screw hole. And adding a millimeter to the diameter of the screw head and a millimeter to the height of the screw head gives the right dimensions for a screw head recess. Finally, print small test parts. Test the fit and make any necessary adjustments before committing to these dimensions in your design. So that's how to design for heat set inserts. Big thanks to everyone who supports the channel, whether with channel memberships or using the links in the description. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing so you don't miss future episodes. Well, 3D printing friends, that's about all the time we have for this one. And now that we're at the end, let's go print something cool.